This is the practice test for chapter 7, number 5. A 1200 kilogram car drives over a hill that falls the arc of a circle of radius 215 meters. I want to find the normal force on the car at the peak of the hill if its speed there is 35 meters per second, and then I want to find out how fast the car would have to go to become airborne when cresting the hill. Don't do that, by the way. That's a bad idea. Okay. So I drew a little picture. Um, car is going over a hill. That hill is part of a circle of radius 215 meters. At the top, it has a velocity of 35 meters per second, or, or at least it does for part A. Or There we go, part A. So, first thing you need is a free body diagram. I know some of you are groaning right now. You need a free body diagram. Okay, so I'm going to draw one of those. Ugh, yuck, that was nasty. Okay. It is Saturday morning. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so let's call that positive x and positive y. Um, some forces. Well, I know gravity is always pulling things down, so let's put that one in there. Mg. In this case, gravity would be 1200 times 9.8, which is uh, 11760. I'm not going to round that right now because it is not a final answer. And you really should try not to round until you have to at the end. Okay. We also have the ground is going to be pushing up on the car. That's the normal force. We don't know what that is. That's what we want to find out. And that's it. Those are the only forces involved. So if I do Newton's second law, okay, in the y direction, so f net y equals m a y, the net forces, we've got, well, we've got normal force up and mg down. So it'd be f n minus 111760. There we go. Equals. We've got mass of 1200. Now A is a little weird. Most of the time when we've had an object on a surface, we've said, oh, we don't want it to move up or down because if it moved up, it would float away, and if it moved down, it'd sink into the, into the surface, and so the acceleration in the y direction would be zero. But this time, in the y direction um, is the radius of a circle we're traveling. traveling. Blah, blah, blah. And to, in order to travel a circle, you must have a centripetal acceleration. So there must be a centripetal acceleration um, this way. Notice that that way is down. So really, AY becomes negative AC. Really. Again, negative because the direction is always to the center of the circle, and it just so happens that for this car, the center of the circle is down, which we have de defined as the negative direction. Okay, which then um, AC is V squared over R, and don't forget the negative. There we go. That negative out is outside the square, by the way, so when you square V, um, the negative will be outside. We're going to get a negative answer here. Okay, if that means if we solve for FN, we're going to get FN equals... Uh, let's see, we're going to move this to the other side, so we get 1760 positive. And then we have this is negative, so we have negative 1200 uh, V squared over R, which is, let's see, V is 35 meters per second, don't forget to square it and R is 215. Put this in a calculator and we get that the normal force is uh, 4,922. I, let's see, I've only got really two sig figs here, but so I'm going to round to 4,900. Yeah. Um, remember for the AP test that they don't care that much about sig figs, but they don't want you to go too far. So I've seen sometimes where they'll give you a point if you are like below four significant figures, because really the answer should have been in two significant figures, but as long as you're under four, you're fine. Um, yeah, so. Okay, part B asks for how fast would we have to go to make this thing fly? Again, don't try that at home, please. Um, let's see, so B... Well, it's the same, uh, everything over here is the same except for this, so this is, er, we don't know what this is now. 
if we want to make something go airborne, basically what we're saying is that it will no longer be in contact with the ground. So there won't be a normal force. So the condition to make something go nor to airborne is that Fn equals zero. And actually this will give us the, the very last moment when you the tires are touching the ground, but they're not actually pushing on the ground, if that makes any sense. So we're going to, whatever velocity we get out of this, any velocity higher than that would make you go airborne. Okay. So in that case, all of this is the same. I'm just going to go back to here. I'm going to go back to here because everything's the same. And, um, well, actually, you know what? I should do this over for points, for points, for points. Okay, so that means Fn minus Mg equals M, negative Mv squared over R, basically. Uh, and this is zero. Okay, that is zero. That's still negative. I keep forgetting that. Hang on. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, now look at We've got M in every term, so M's actually going to go away. Goodbye. So this is going to apply for any car at all. And then V just means multiply both sides by R. And... Oh, that's, that's it. And then square root it. I've got a negative on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by a, a negative 1 to make those positive. And what I end up with is that V is going to be the square root of G times R. That's, that's it. So, there we go. Oops, that's not a point. That's a 1. Okay. And the airborne speed is therefore 45.9. Yep. Now, again, this is, this is the, the, Fastest speed you have in your tires would still touch it, so technically speaking, V would have to be greater than that. If you don't do that uh, on the test, I'm, I think I'm going to let it go, but technically this is the answer. It should be a, a greater than sign, not uh, uh, an equal sign.